Hi, I'm Sam. Best practices in a project are the techniques and workflows that are generally regarded to yield a better workflow for the team, a better work product for your end users. So one of the ones I wanted to take a look at in this article, I mentioned briefly in this video, is project structure. Setting up your Unity project so that it's scalable and aids working on a team of people. So I wanted to talk about a couple aspects from the assets folder structure that I show in the article. One is separating your third parties out. So it's common to bring in code assets and other um, types of objects and files into your project from third party resources, either asset packages from the Unity asset store, um, projects from Unity themselves, things you find around the community. Here, isolating them in a third party folder and adding a text file to simply say where you got it from, what version is it, because it's not always easy to find, and maybe a URL where you got it is really helpful down the road to do a periodic update of those libraries if you need to. Second thing I wanted to mention is that while Unity has a lot of art type of assets, I group them under one art folder. So I do that really to help give visibility um, and workflow ease to the art staff. So artists on your project might be various disciplines from 2D, 3D animators, um, effects artists, technical artists, etc. So by giving the most popular folders their own home under the art parent folder, it helps to both give visibility into the process, hey, this is where that part of the team should be working, helps police commits from, from them uh, in those groups to the team, um, helps isolate who is touching which areas of the code base, which prevents conflicts, um, and increases communication around that. Uh, next one, in skipping a few that are on the list here, but going down to the scripts folder. So notice that I separate the editor from the runtime from the testing. And uh, there's some peculiarities with Unity and how it needs folders to be in a certain structure. For example, the editor folder, the gizmos folder, the resources folder, these names are somewhat reserved and you need to place them in certain places in some cases. Gizmos needs to be in the root, for example. Here, the um, I'm embracing a bit of that because the editor is used in a couple spots, the editor folder, but I'm talking about separating your runtime code from your editor code and from your test code. Tests also run in the editor typically, although you can put some in play mode now as well. So by separating those, yet keeping the namespaces consistent, notice that little um, namespace call out, that helps these classes communicate together from an organizational standpoint, but be separated structurally. It also allows your team to be able to delete the test folder if you want to before delivering packages to teams, clients, vendors, the asset store, et cetera. So that's one of the reasons the test is separated out like that. That's it. Thanks very much.